Hello, Jenny Hall here for Trinity Stamps. Today I would like to share a whole stack of cards with you that is created with some silhouette Halloween stamps from Trinity Stamps. Here's the flyby stamp set, and then here is a really big set. This is trick or treat stamp set full of beautiful and cute little silhouette stamps. And for my sentiment, I'll be using a sentiment for almost everything. And then I'm giving you a look at Hello Beautiful because that's also an option. I'm going to be using my set of Magello Mission Gold watercolors, a flat brush, and some high quality watercolor paper. This is Arches watercolor paper, and I have already taped it down to a hard board. I taped down six panels because that will give me a nice time sitting down to make the washes. The first thing I do is to spray my watercolor set with water to start getting the pigment moving a little bit. And then I add just a nice, not too much, I would say I dip the brush in and then take it to the, the piece of paper and maybe dip it one more time if the paper soaks up the water really fast. That's essential when making a watercolor wash for me if I'm going to cover the entire background. Watercolor washes are really fun to create and watch the colors blend together. Sometimes, as you can see here, by taking two colors and then introducing a third color like the purple, it totally gives it a different look. So moving on to the next panel, I have added a coat of water and then I'm going to add some colors from the bottom to the top. If you are new to making watercolor washes, then this is something you can do to just play with. There is no right or wrong. There is no, there's no way of saying, oh, you did that watercolor wash wrong because it can't go wrong. This is just putting the color to the paper and letting it do its own thing. It's so much fun and it's really relaxing for me. So I prepared this to do six different panels and I ended up doing five because one of them was like an experiment or um, it was like auditioning colors to see what they would look like whenever they touched each other. Because sometimes if you put down green and red, then you'll end up with brown where they actually touch together and that if that's what you're intending, then that's great. But if it's not, then sometimes when that kind of thing happens, it's good to know that it's a possibility. So I'm mixing together some really vibrant colors. And then I want to do some muted colors as well. So you saw the purple and the pink together right above this panel. And then I went in the opposite direction to show you what it looks like to start off with some black paint and give it a, just a nice little coating there. And then I grabbed the blue and added more blue to the bottom and then working it upwards. And it turns out so pretty. It's like a smoky sky almost, like a, like a hazy, hazy winter night or something. It, and it'll do perfectly to have a witch featured on it. So here's the last panel, and then you can see that one above it that I mentioned that it was just like for auditioning colors. I'm not going to use that panel. I'm not even going to do anything with it from here on. I'm just going to focus on this, the five panels that I'm creating. And you can see, look at the red, the orange, and the yellow. Just They work together so beautifully. Now, the ideal situation would be to let these panels dry on their own. But I were making the video and I wanted to make sure that I showed you what it looked like without waiting for two hours. And so here's the reveal and the panels are completely dry. And because this is good watercolor paper and I used purple tape, which purple tape is a very low tack tape, then I did not have a problem with any of the paper coming away with the tape. It stayed in place and the tape comes off and it works beautifully. And you can see it's just so cool to have this little frame around each one of the watercolor areas. Now I want to try to trim these down 
to where there's about an eighth of an inch, maybe a generous eighth of an inch, around the edge of each one of these panels. It doesn't have to be a precise measurement. I just want it to look even. So I lined up the uh, the color line with um, that little measuring bar on my tonic trimmer. And that was that was one way that I could get them all to be the same size. Now to add some really fun images. The trick or treat set has got little kids trick or treating plus this little cat. And I thought it would be perfect. And just look at how they look at on all of the backgrounds. It just, it is so much fun. And I'll be able to pop these in the mail. They're a simple card. I can make a whole bunch of them in nothing flat. Now I'm taking some craft foam that has adhesive on one side and I'm placing some liquid adhesive on the opposite. And that's going to get me to where I can have all of these glued down to the card base. Because water pa watercolor paper can buckle a little bit, then I wanted there to be a lot of stability. And this would take a lot on my big scotch roll. And it, it would um, I would have a whole lot of strips. And so I decided that I wanted to just use these craft the craft foam. It just makes it so much easier to give a little bit of dimension and stability. So having the craft foam as a solid piece keeps that watercolor panel nice and flat. After adding the adhesive, then I made sure to stack them up and place something really heavy on them. I, I think I put the, the, the full-size Misty on top of them for a couple of hours and so the glue was nice and, and tight. Here's another card I made that was on an ink blended background with some more of the trick or treat. Trick or treat and flyby are available in the Trinity shop now and all of the links are listed in the video description. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.